All right, in this lecture, we're going to learn about uh, Python scripting for the operating system. And what's going to be contained in here is basically to give you an idea uh, how to do a lot of tasks that typically in the past historically would have been done with a bash script. Um, you know, in, in the past, you couldn't count on Python being uh, shipped with a Unix operating system, but that's not true today. It's pretty much standard uh, to be shipped on any any system that you'll find, and, and if not, it's very easily installed. Uh, and because of that, you know, it's going to be my choice or my recommendation for writing anything more complicated than just a few lines of bash, because I think you'll find that the syntax is a, is a lot friendlier, uh, you know, especially once you start doing looping constructs and other things. And basically, you know, anything you can do in bash, you can do in Python, um, typically a lot simpler. Um, uh, a lot more readable and then of course you have the full power of the whole Python language so you can do a, a whole lot more uh, in the end. So we'll start with uh, you know just something really simple you can basically write a Python script and just like a, a bash script the Python script will have a shebang line uh, and should look like this right here and then you can call any Unix command from a Python script by first uh, importing the sum process module, and then, and then uh, you you'd use that by saying sub process, and then and then one of the functions that's a member of sub process module is a function called call, and then you can just type in the exact Unix command that you would use. So in this case, ls minus l. So uh, obviously, you know, to replace th three lines of Python code with, um, you know, something you can do very easily from the command line, ls minus l is not that productive. Um, however, you're going to see the utility as we move on to a little bit more complicated things. So just to show you, here's the same script that I have in the slide there and uh, in the Python script. And uh, if we run that, ls pi, okay, and we get the same answer, okay. So this is where uh, you know the utility of Python starts to show up and its ease of uh, you know looping or, or also conditional statements like if. So here we can loop over uh, a multitude uh, of uh, Unix commands, in this case only two uh, that I'm showing here, but uh, there could be more and the easiest way to do that is to simply uh, place them in a Python list like this. Okay, so a Python list can, you know, is dynamic, so it can be list of strings uh, combined with integers combined with real numbers. And this, in this case, we just have a list of strings that we're then going to loop over. And of course, in the Python, we'll use an iterator for that, namely the this command. So we we'll use the syntax for command in commands. What that's going to do is, uh, as it loops over this this list, you're, you're going to uh, each time command will be replaced with that string and then subprocess will be called on it. And so in this case we can loop over those two commands and uh, I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I have the, the file here, it's the same as the slide. And if we run that you see at the top it first echoes you know, a listing of the directory and then it, and then it performs the ls minus l. So, uh, this, is, this kind of offers a way to start converting any bash scripts that you may have uh, into Python scripts by simply assigning them to variables uh, and then looping over them if it's just a, a sequence of commands like that. Of course, you know, we still replaced what you can do in two lines of Unix with you know, ten lines of Python or whatever, which is not very productive. But as we move to more complicated things, so uh, you know, we can create functions very easily in Python. Here, the, the syntax is a little bit nicer than if you were to try to create a bash function. Um, and what this function actually does is uh, it takes the base name of a file, say in this case if we had a, a file called test.1.png, and we wanted to make that into a file called new.1.png then we run this this function on it. So the function change name takes as an argument the, f the old name 
and then the new, the new base name. And so what that does, uh, this first this first uh, line here, splits the old name uh, based on the period. So it'll split uh, test.1.png into a list containing test1 and then png separately. Okay, and then we're going to just simply concatenate one and png with the new base name. So the new base name plus a period plus temp1, which would be, in this case, 1, plus a period, plus temp2, which in this case would be PNG. Uh, and then what we're going to do is call the subprocess, uh, sub, the, the module, uh, call, and uh, move the old, old name to the new name. So this is basically just a, a base name renaming utility. And then down here we just call the function, OK? So, uh, if we look in the in the if we look in the home directory or in my directory here, uh, you'll see a file called test.1.png. So, if we run the change name script, which is exactly like it is in the slide, uh, you'll see that test.1.png has been changed to new.1.png. Okay. So, again, not terribly interesting but uh, we're going to add some functionality and this is how we, we kind of put it all together. So uh, here we're, we're going to define a couple of functions. The first function uh, is just a function that's going to run a bash command but this time instead of just uh, printing the output it's going to actually pipe the output uh, to standard out and then uh, once it's been piped to standard out we're going to take it and split it, we're going to take it and split it into a Python list based on the line, the line ending. So uh, for every line that's output to standard out, they would be put into a Python list, okay? And so that's what that first function does. Uh, the second function is exactly the one we just covered. It basically takes a base name and changes it in, into a, uh, with a new base name. So then uh, the last function, uh, change all names, we're going to first run bash on ls. So it'll print a listing of the files in the directory, uh, pipe that listing into a Python list, and then we're going to loop over that list with this command. So for a file in files, which comes from here, we're going to loop over that. And every time, we're going to then uh, change the name, the base name, uh, if and only if the uh, the base name matches the old base name. So in other words, uh, we don't. If you know, in, in this particular case, uh, you'll see in a second. There's files in my directory that I don't want to change uh, because they don't match. Uh, you know, the keyword test. So basically, let me just. It's probably time to move over for an example. Um, first of all, I have a script that'll that'll create a bunch of dummy uh, PNG files. So you can see my, I have in my directory there uh, a bunch of PNG files uh, and this happens a lot when the output of simulations or something you'll, you may get you know kind of files numbered like this and, you, and for some reason you may want to change the name of them. So while I want to change all the files named you know test.30.png or whatever I don't want to uh, I don't want to change any other, you know, names, uh, any other files in that directory. So, uh, bas basically, using this script here, uh, which I uh, called change all names. I, there, this is the same uh, script that's in the, in the, again, from the slides. At the end, I'm going to call change all names. Uh, with the input test, so I want to change any file with the base name test to a file with the base name new. And so if we run that, you see all the files that were named test have now been renamed uh, new. So th this is a, you know, I'm basically list listing the, the directory, finding all the files named that were named test something, and replacing that with new. And, and concatenate it with whatever it was before. So you can see this becomes a, you know, here's where a little more utility is. We, we wouldn't want to rename all those files uh, one by one. Okay, so the next thing we can do
to add some a uh, little bit more utility to our um, functions is to add arguments. So there's a, a really nice module in Python, Python called argparse, which allows us to add input arguments or command line inputs. And so this this code right here at the top basically just adds a parser such that when I um, run this file from the command line, now I don't have to, uh, as you see, saw before, I don't have to hard code uh, the, the call to change all names. Uh, you know, now I can accept inputs, say test and new, uh, from the uh, from the command line itself, which makes you know my function a little more uh, a little easier to use. So uh, what's in the middle here is basically everything from the previous slide, and then the finally uh, when we call change all names, we're going to uh, use the arguments that we parsed uh, up here. Okay, so uh, an example then here would be uh, a new new script that I've called you know batch rename.py. So here you see the argument parser at the top, and uh, followed by the same three functions from before, and the final call to change all names. Okay, so uh, I'm going to remove those. Uh, New files and let's uh, create a new set of dummy PNGs. Okay, and so now we can run this batch uh, rename.py with um, you know changing test to new. Okay, and you see that happens. So let me uh, remove those again. Uh, create them one last time. Okay, and just to show you. That uh, you know it does work instead of you. So if we want to change test to um, something different, so let's just say something. I'm sorry. Need to run the file. There you see they've been changed uh, to something. So if we remove those one last time. Okay. So. Next, you know, th this was actually quite easy because the, f the way the files were named, the, the period uh, actually made it very easy to split them. However, you know, we can also do it if, if we didn't have something so obvious the, as the period to split the file names apart. Um, we could do it with regular expressions as well. So now I'm importing basically the same function Except I'm importing a, a module RE, which you know stands for regular expressions, and then the only difference between this and the other code is when I split them. Instead of splitting on a period, I'm going to split based on one or any occurrences of digits. Okay, and the the parentheses here around the regular expression here and here indicate that I want to actually return whatever I split. Uh, into my list. So this is going to return a list, namely with the base name, whatever your split criterion is, and then uh, you know whatever's the, the file extension or whatever's left. Um, if we didn't have the parentheses there, it would actually omit uh, the digits themselves and just return the base name and and uh, omit whatever you know the 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 uh, the digits that you're trying to split. And since we want them to to reconcatenate them to our new string, um, we, we want them to remain. So I, I'd encourage you to play around with that. But anyway, basically the only difference between that and the, and the previous file is how we're splitting it. So I, you know, I split it there. I split uh, the string here as well. So let me go ahead and give you an example of that as well. So if we had a bunch of files that this time don't have a dot, to, to say, you know, so now the dot between test and the, the number is gone. Um, it makes it a little more difficult to split them, so we have to use these regular expressions, uh, which, you know, if we uh, take a look, I have another file called batch regular expressions.txt. Oh, sorry. Dot pi. All right. So there uh, is the, the 
this is the same file from the slide, the output from the slide. So then if we just run batch regular expression, and then we still have the argument parser in there, so we're going to change test to new, say, RE. And uh, there you see new RE and the number concatenated. All right. So these are the kind of things you can do with a Python script. Uh, you know, really, there's nothing that I did here that you couldn't also do with a Bash script. However, I would argue that the Python uh, is probably you know a little bit more syntax concise, and in my opinion, good code is at first readable code, uh, so that other people can use and extend it easily. And Python is certainly a little bit more readable than Bash. So. Uh, in the performance area, they're probably about equivalent, and uh, you know I think you should know a little bit of Bash scripting for the, just the most basic things. But as your scripts become more and more complicated, uh, especially if you're doing any kind of computations in them, I think you're going to find that uh, Python scripting is is a lot easier, a lot more extensible, and uh, probably uh, better for what you're trying to do. Thanks.